Hello and welcome to this video tutorial. Today we're going to look at creating a bendy pattern like this in Adobe Illustrator. We're going to start with a new file. It doesn't matter too much how big your file is. Mine happens to be screen size at 1920 by 1080. We're going to draw a line. So I have the line tool here. I have the default colors, which you can get to by just pressing the letter D. I'm going to hold the shift key as I click and drag to create a line that gives me a black line with obviously no fill because it is a line. I'm going to set the stroke weight to six to start off with. Then I'm going to choose effect and then distort and transform and zigzag. This is going to give us the beginnings of our line. I'm going to bring the ridges per segment down to three. I'm going to increase the size quite large. And then because I want it to be smooth, I'm going to click here on smooth. What I'm looking for is this bend here because that's going to be half the width of our pattern. In a minute, we're going to put the same bend down here. So you want the bend here to be the size of the bend in your final pattern. I'm going to increase mine a little bit to 60 pixels. I'll just click OK. This is a line that has an effect applied to it. We want to bake this in. So we're going to, with the line still selected, choose Object and Expand Appearance. So this gives us our line. The line is still selected, so I'm going to the Scissors tool here. It shares a toolbar position with the Eraser tool. The Scissors tool we're going to use on these anchor points. I'm just going to click here on this anchor point and click here on this anchor point. What that does is it splits the line. So now if I go back to the Selection tool, I can select over this end of the line and remove it and select over this end of the line and remove it, and I'm left with just my loop. I'm going to rotate it, so I'm selecting it, hold the shift key as I just rotate it to 90 degrees. So this would be a line that we could use in a very plain sort of pattern. I'm actually going to increase its stroke width so it's a little bit thicker. I'm going to set it to 12. I'm going to reflect this line, so I'm going to, with its selected, choose Object and then Transform and Reflect. I'm going to reflect it over the vertical. I want the original plus a copy, so I'm going to click here on copy. And then I'm just going to select the piece I want to move and move it across. So at this point, what I'm looking for is the space here to be the final space that I'm going to be using. So if I want it a bit further apart, I'm going to move it a bit further apart. As you're moving, it is a good idea to hold the shift key down so that you're moving in a perfectly horizontal direction because you want the tops of these two pieces to be lined up. If you think that you've made a mistake and move them, select over them and in the align tab, you can get to the Align tab either over here or Window and Align. You want to select here on Vertical Align Top so that you make sure that they're lined up perfectly with each other. Otherwise, your pattern is going to suffer because of that. I'll select both my shapes and choose Object and then Pattern and make click OK. And what I want to do now is to space these out. So I'm going to make sure that this icon looks like this, not like this. I don't want it to look it's like it's locked. I want it to be unlocked. I'm going to start increasing the width to move these apart. And I'm looking at just visually trying to get this space and this space to be the same. So I think I'm pretty good there. And with the height, I don't want to leave a height at this kind of number. That is a fractional number. So I'm just going to set it to the next nearest number just by pressing the down arrow key. If I click to show the tile edge, I can see which elements are actually part of my pattern. So I'm just going to focus on those. I want to have a look at this area down here. So I'm going to the zoom tool because if that's not a perfect seam, I need to know that now. So let me just show you what a not perfect seam is going to look like. It's going to look like this. You're going to see a line there, but if you decrease the height a little bit, you're going to ram these two edges together and you're going to have a pattern that's going to look perfect. Really happy with this pattern. I'll just click done. At this point, I'll select over my shapes and I just want to move them off the edge of the artboard. I'm going to test my pattern with a rectangle that is the size of the artboard. Let's just square it up on the artboard to center it vertically and horizontally. Going to flip the fill and strokes. I'm targeted on the fill here. Go up to my swatches panel. If you don't see your swatches panel, choose window and then swatches and let's fill it with our pattern. You can also decrease the size of the pattern in the object with object transform and then scale. 
I'm going to deselect transform objects. I don't want to transform my objects. I just want to transform my pattern. So let me take this down to 50% and now we can see our pattern. Of course, we can recolor it by selecting the rectangle that has the pattern in it. Go up here onto the control bar and choose recolor artwork. We'll go to advanced options. At this point, you'll just click here to turn that bar into an arrow, which means you can now edit the black. Let's go to the edit tool. Let's bring the color out a little bit and adjust this. And now we have a color in our lines and we can choose any color that we like for our design. This of course adds a second pattern to our swatches. So we still have the original black one and now the red one. These are transparent patterns so you could put something else underneath them to show through them. If you like carefully researched content like this clearly presented in a step-by-step -step format so that you can get great results, then you'll love my Skillshare content. I'm a Skillshare top teacher. I have hundreds of short courses on Skillshare that you can access along with thousands of other great courses, all for the price of a single subscription. If you're interested, there's a Skillshare coupon for you in the description below to use to sign up. Using this coupon benefits me as a creator and it helps me continue to make free content available here for you also on YouTube. Thank you for joining me for this video tutorial. On the screen now you'll see a video that I've handpicked for you. If you enjoyed the video you've just watched, I know that you're going to really enjoy the one I've picked for you to watch next.